when we talk about inflammatory neutrophilia and neutrophils in general, we're really focusing on kind of the whole point of the neutrophil, and that is to deal with tissue inflammation and inflammatory mediators that are released from that inflammation in response to infection, cell death, neoplasia, you name it. And so with an inflammatory neutrophilia and with neutrophils in general, we have to consider a few things. And that's going to be numbers. So numbers of neutrophils, both mature and immature. We're going to talk about morphology of neutrophils. And we're going to talk about other cell types. Because sometimes that can help us to identify the actual type of neutrophilia and what type of inflammation it is. And we'll talk briefly, although not right now, about acute and chronic inflammation, which is sometimes somewhat easy to differentiate and other times it isn't. But of course, it's a continuum depending on when the inflammation starts, and you may not know the answer to that. Something important to keep um, kind of in the back of your mind, that stress can happen concurrently with inflammation. Of course, these are sick animals, and how you're going to identify that is you're going to look for a lymphopenia. Numbers of neutrophils in the blood are going to be determined by bone marrow storage and production and tissue utilization. So that if you have ample bone marrow production, you're going to have a neutrophilia. Whereas if you have overwhelming tissue utilization of neutrophils, you're potentially going to have a neutropenia, even in the face of inflammation. So with inflammation, your neutrophil storage pools are the neutrophil storage pool is released due to inflammatory mediators, and that's what this is, because it goes to the blood and it goes to the marrow. So neutrophils that are marginated in the blood are going to leave and go to sites of inflammation, and neutrophils from the storage pool are going to go to the tissue as well via the blood, and that's why you'll see increases. If the inflammation is more severe, you're going to get releases of earlier forms as well, and we're going to call that a left shift, which I mentioned earlier. In time, you are going to start making more neutrophils, and that is going to happen by your proliferation pool, remember your factory, is going to start increasing production, and it's going to feed your storage pool. And then that's going to go into your blood and increase neutrophil numbers. But keep in the back of your mind this whole time is that it's the tissue that's really driving what's going on in the bone marrow and in the blood. So the more severe the inflammation, the greater the incentive and the greater the, the sort of spurring on of the bone marrow to make neutrophils. Also, um, this increase in neutrophil production in the marrow is called myeloid hyperplasia or granulocytic hyperplasia. And we don't expect that right away. Remember, that's going to take a few days, just like with red cells, to actually start making more neutrophils. So we identify inflammation in the blood, and this includes a neutrophilia by a few things. A neutrophilia that is greater than two times the upper reference limit, and it's not an excited cat, equals inflammation. Uh, a neutrophilia or any neutrophil count, so we're just going to say any neutrophil count, plus a left shift equals inflammation. A neutrophil number, again, any number, plus something called toxic change, which I'm going to tell you about in a second, equals inflammation. Now, if you have a neutrophil count that is less, excuse me, less than two times the upper reference limit, you may not be able to tell if there's inflammation or not. It could be stress if there's a lymphopenia. Um, if there's, again, toxic change or a left shift, then it's inflammation. If there is a concurrent increase in monocytes, so a monocytosis that is also greater than two times the upper reference limit, that's certainly going to support inflammation. And increases in lymphocytes, especially if you have an increase in globulins, uh, is going to support inflammation concurrent with the neutrophilia. So again, just to reiterate, a neutrophilia that's greater than two times the upper reference limit, a mature neutrophilia equals inflammation. Any neutrophil count, whether it's decreased, normal, or increased, plus a left shift, or plus neutrophil toxic change equals inflammation. 
If neutrophils are increased but it's less than two times the upper reference limit, that's going to be hard for you to identify, so you're going to have to look for other things. But concurrent monocytosis or a concurrent lymphocytosis um, without it being stress for the monocytosis or excitement for the lymphocytosis would also support inflammation. And then increases in globulins, especially when you have that increase in lymphocyte, would also support especially chronic inflammation. So the presence of band neutrophils, right? So these are band neutrophils. They have that horseshoe shape. This equals inflammation. And we call this when uh, your neutrophil numbers are increased and you have a left shift. That's called a regenerative left shift or just a left shift. And that's an appropriate response to inflammation. It means the tissue is pulling out bands from the storage pool as well as neutrophils. Now, if you have a neutrophil count that's decreased plus a left shift, or if you have immature neutrophils that are greater than mature neutrophils, this is called a degenerative left shift. And this is bad because going back to that cat with the abscess, that means that tissue neutrophils are being used up faster than the bone marrow can make them, and it tends to be a poor prognostic indicator, except in cattle, and we'll talk about how cattle be your exception. So when we talk about a left shift, that always equals inflammation. Um, this, the regenerative type is better. A degenerative left shift, we'll talk about more, is not so great. So neutrophil toxic change is a, degener it's a developmental change. It means that the bone marrow is making um, more neutrophils with maturation defects because there's a shortened maturation time most commonly. So if normal neutrophil cytoplasm is kind of this dusty pink color, the things that we see that tell us that there's toxic change is going to be where the cytoplasm is kind of bluish. So we say basophilic cytoplasm, which is what makes it hard to tell the difference between those and monocytes. Um, you can also have foamy cytoplasm and so you can see here that the cytoplasm has cleared areas. Here it looks slightly basophilic, so we have foamy cytoplasm. And then the last most common one are doli bodies. And doli bodies are these kind of basophilic inclusions that you need to not mistake for an infectious agent. So those are the three most common things that we see with toxic change, and we grade it from slight to marked or severe, and the greater numbers that are present in the greater numbers of cells tells you that it's marked. And again, this indicates inflammation.